Greeners are something that's really truly sustainable. Uh, it's, it's development, but it's something that is helpful to the environment and it's something that is going to be helping the local community as well. Dustin Partridge is a doctoral candidate at Fordham University. He's studying how green roofs can serve as important wildlife habitat in large cities like New York. New York City is right along the Atlantic Flyway and these birds are flying through, stopping over, looking for food to eat, and maybe they're stopping on our green roofs, which is potentially a great spot for them. But if there's nothing there for them to eat while they're migrating, then it's not the best habitat. Partridge has a few ways of telling how healthy the green roof habitat really is. On 13 roofs around New York boroughs, he sets up traps to find out what kind of insects live there. He conducts weekly surveys to watch for visiting birds, and from dawn to dusk, he also records noises on the roof. Anytime a bird lands, and vocalizes, that autonomous recording it picks it up. And then I can go back and go through all the data and figure out what birds were on that roof. For every green roof Partridge surveys, he also compares it to a nearby traditional roof. The blacktop roof is set up the exact same way as my green roof, and it's basically a way for me to figure out what species are in the neighborhood. So far, his survey showed around 200 species of insects. On the green roofs, they're up to 11 times more abundant than on traditional roofs. He's also found 23 species of birds unique to green roofs, including rare peregrine falcons and lots of ruby-throated hummingbirds. The advantages provided by green roofs are numerous. They save money on heating and cooling bills and trap stormwater runoff. Many cities grant tax incentives for green roof owners, too. And now, thanks to Partridge's study, we know that they also provide significant benefits for wildlife. On top of all those uh, environmental benefits, I'm very interested in how we could reconnect people with the environment. There's this idea of the extinction of experience, where these people that are living in an urban environment really don't have a chance to connect with the outdoors. Approximately 34% of Manhattan is rooftop, whereas only about 15% of the city is natural habitat or green space. You know, lower Manhattan, the chaos is there. Then you hop in the elevator and you go up and you walk out to a little oasis. You know, you're a quarter mile from the nearest set of trees, two miles from any park. And yet up there you hear crickets chirping, you have birds landing and singing, and you, know, you never know what you're going to see.